Hey everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes Do, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make the Elio rug. The Elio rug is a crocheted rug. We're going to be making it in a semi-circle shape, and it features this beautiful sun pattern. Um, it's a very easy rug to make. It's very sturdy since it's made with 24-7 cotton, and works up relatively quickly since we're going to be holding two strands together the whole time. So for the Elio rug, you will need four skeins total of Lion Brands 24-7 cotton. So two skeins in Accru, if you're using the same colors as me, and two skeins in Camel. And the reason why we need two of each is because we're gonna hold them together. So two strands of Camel together, two strands of Accru together, and we're gonna be using basic crochet stitches as well as tapestry crochet to make our beautiful rugs. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start our Elio rug, we are using our 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and we're using our 24 seven cotton. We're gonna start with the camel color and we are gonna be holding two strands of yarn together throughout this whole pattern. So I have two skeins of the camel color. I've pulled out the middle sections and found the ends and we're just gonna hold them together the whole time. So this is going to be um, a little bit tough on your hands, so you might want to take some breaks here and there if your hands start hurting. But to start, we are going to form a magic loop. So this is how I do mine. I make sure that they're crossed in the front and I have two strands going across the top of my fingers. I go under the first one, grab the second one, pull it up. I kind of pinch it and pull my fingers out. And then I take my working yarn like this and we're just going to chain one to kind of secure our magic loop and then we want to be working into our loop around all of the strands. So for row one we're just going to single crochet six into our magic loop. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Oops. Okay, <laughs> so then we're just gonna pull the end of our loop together to pull that nice and tight. And you can see we have a little half circle starting to form here. Okay, for row two, we're gonna chain one and turn, and we're gonna work two single crochet into the first stitch. And then one single crochet in the next. And then two single crochet one, two, and then single crochet one. And then two single crochet in the next. And again, this is very tight since we want it to be a very sturdy rug. And we're holding two strands and we're using a small hook. And then one single crochet in that last stitch. Okay, and we'll have nine stitches at the end of row two. We chain one and turn. And for row three, we're gonna start the same. We always start with an increase. So we're gonna single crochet two, or two single crochet into the first stitch. Then we're gonna do one single crochet in the next two stitches. So one, two. Then we're gonna do two single crochet in the next. And then work one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. And then repeat that again one more time. Two single crochet in the next stitch. Ooh. And then one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. One, 
two. And you'll notice that in this pattern, we're always going to start our row with an increase. And on the single crochet rows, we're gonna increase by three. But on the double crochet rows, which I'm about to show you, we will actually increase by six. Okay, so now for row four, we're going to chain two. The chains at the beginning of the rows do not count as a stitch. We're gonna turn and we're gonna start by increasing. We're gonna do two double crochet into the first stitch. Okay. And then we are going to do one double crochet into the next. And then two double crochet. and then double crochet one. And we're gonna repeat that all the way across. So we're increasing and then just doing one double crochet. And I'm already feeling this in my hands. This is gonna give your hands a nice little workout, but it'll be worth it in the end, I promise. Getting down to our last two increases. Okay, last one has two double crochet here and then one double crochet into that last stitch. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the bulk part of the pattern with like the bottom section of the sun, the main like round section of the sun. So we're going to be doing two single crochet rows. And again, each single crochet row increases by three. And then we're gonna do a double crochet row and that increases by six. So we're just gonna go back and forth. We're gonna do two single crochet rows and a double crochet row um, throughout the full body of this main part of the sun. So for row five, we chain one and turn. And you'll notice um, you should be following along with the written pattern that will really help you here, especially keeping track of where you're gonna be placing your increases. We're always gonna start with an increase, but the amount of stitches in between, in between the increases is gonna change. Um, so our last row of single crochet that we had we had two single crochet in between. Now these double crochet rows basically are two of those single crochet rows together. So it would have been three in between, four in between. So we know the next one, we're gonna do five in between. And this is all written out in the pattern. So you don't have to remember these um, if you're following along with the written pattern, which is free on my blog. But we're gonna do two single crochet in the first stitch, and then we're gonna single crochet for five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we're gonna do two single crochet in the next stitch. That's one and two. And then single crochet five. That's one, two, three, four and five. Ooh, make sure that you're always grabbing both strands of yarn there. And then we're gonna single crochet two or two single crochet in the next stitch. And then again, single crochet five. So one, two, three, four, and five, okay? And then row six, chain one and turn. 
and for row six, since we just had five single crochets in between our increases, now we're going to have six single crochets in between our increases. So we're going to single crochet or do two single crochet in the first stitch. As always, we're always starting with an increase. And then we're going to single crochet six. That was one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and then work two single crochet into the next one. This is one of our increases. And then single crochet six. One, two, three, four, oops. Make sure you always have both strands of yarn on there. I forget what I'm on. This is five. There's our increase. One, two, three, four, five. And one more is six. And then again, two single crochet in the next. And we'll single crochet six. Lost my second strand there. Okay. Whew. I'm really feeling it in my left hand and my left arm right now. Okay, so we did two rows of single crochet. Now we're gonna do our double crochet row. So we're going to chain two and turn. And again, starting with two double crochet in the first stitch. So there's one. And two. Okay. And then our last one here, we had one double crochet in between our increases for the last double crochet row. But we've worked two single crochet rows, which is equivalent to one double crochet row. And that one we would have done two in between. So this time we are going to work three double crochet in between. And again, this is all written down in the pattern so you can easily follow along. I'm just trying to make you aware of how the pattern goes and how the increase pattern goes so you can more easily work your rug. So we're gonna do three double crochet and then we'll work two double crochet into the next stitch. And then again, three double crochet. And then two double crochet in the next. And we're just going to repeat this all the way across our row. So we increase and then work three double crochet. Okay, so here we are at the end of row seven, which is a double crochet row. You will have 30 stitches when you're done with this row. And now we're just going to kind of repeat that process. If you look at the written pattern, we're gonna do two rows of single crochet and then a row of double crochet. I'm just gonna repeat that process all the way until we have 22 rows and you will end with 90 stitches total. So I'm not gonna show you all those rows. You can follow along with the written pattern, but it's just like how we did the last three rows here. So you're gonna do two single crochet rows, increasing by three each time and then one double crochet row increasing by six. And again, you always start with an increase at the very beginning stitch, and then you'll have stitches kind of in between those increases as you go, and they do kind of follow a pattern. So 
I will finish up and do my 22 rows with my 90 stitches at the end and then I will meet you back here and show you how to work our color changes. Okay, so here you can see we've just finished our row 22 and I have 90 stitches around my little half circle shape here. So our next section is going to be a color work section where we make um, like the sun rays. So we're gonna be adding in a second color. Um, again, the second color is going to be doubled up and we're gonna be using tapestry crochet to do this and all double crochets to do this. So you'll also notice in the written pattern um, that I have sectioned off certain stitches to indicate what color those stitches will be worked. Um, so if it's A, I'm talking about the camel color, this main color that we started with. And if I'm talking about color B, I'm talking about the accrue color, which will be what goes in between the sun rays. Um, so hopefully you have the written pattern out and you're following along with this. That's going to be the easiest thing. Um, so we're going to chain two and turn. And this is row 23. So we're going to start by working two double crochet into the first stitch. So there's one. And two, oops, there we go. Also, if you're hearing some banging in the background, they've been doing construction <laughs> near my house for a very long time. And I just, I have got to keep working. So I apologize for the banging hammering, um, but hopefully it's not too loud. Okay, so now we're going to double crochet six. So this first part, the increase, and these six double crochet, we're all gonna do in the camel color. There's two. Three. Four. Ooh. And on the sixth one, we're going to be switching color. So I'm going to do my first yarn over and pull through here, but I'm not gonna do this last one to finish off. This is where I'm going to change my color. So I've got my color B all ready to go. It's double stranded. Um, so I'm holding on to two strands. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail for weaving in. And then we're just gonna finish off that sixth stitch of camel with the new yarn. So I'm gonna kind of move my tail out of the way. And in order to keep my yarn from getting super tangled, I like to keep one color kind of in the back and one color towards the front. Um, and then we're going to be using the tapestry crochet technique, which means I'm gonna be working around <clears throat> these strands as I use color B and then around the color B strands when I use color A. So you'll see as I get going. So we're just needing to do one double crochet with our new color. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm inserting my hook and also I have my strands going across so that when I make my stitch, it wraps around those strands. But since we're only doing one stitch, again, just as I did just a second ago, I'm gonna stop here and I'm going to switch color. So I'm going to bring color B to the front so it doesn't get tangled up with color A. And then I'll just finish my stitch with color A. Now we're going to be wrapping our yarn around color B while we use color A to make our stitches. So our next set, we're going to double crochet for seven. Again, making sure that we have color B in between so that we're wrapping our stitches around color B, and that's gonna hide them into the rug. So if you've never done tapestry crochet before, um, you can check out more detailed videos of this technique on my channel, and I'll put a link in the description below. Um, it can take a little bit of time to get used to it, but I promise it's totally worth it. Um, 
and the results are just wonderful. It's a great way to do some color work. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, two more stitches. Six, seven. Okay, and now we're gonna do an increase. So in the next stitch, we're gonna do two double crochet. Again, always working around the strands of the second color. There's our increase. And then we double crochet for six. Okay, and at the end of our sixth stitch, we're gonna switch color again. So what I like to do is kind of give it a little bit of a tug on um, the color B strands, just to make sure that it's laying flat around the edge of our row. And then you can see on the back side, it's pretty much invisible as well. So now we're going to again, switch to color B, making sure that we're wrapping our yarn around the color A strands as well. And we're just doing one stitch again. So that was our one repeat. Um, so we make one stitch in the new color. We work seven double crochet, an increase with two double crochet, and then six double crochet. And then we just repeat that until we've done it five times total. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that five times and then I'll meet you back here and we can finish up our row. Okay, so we've done our five repeats and I'm on my sixth stitch of the last repeat. So I'm going to switch to color B, work one double crochet in color B, switch back to color A, And then I'm going to work seven double crochet. So just double crochet basically to the end. Oh, actually, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to drop this color because I won't need it again until the next row. And why carry it all the way to the end and see it when we don't have to? Um, so we're only gonna be carrying the accrue color um, from each time that we need it basically. So at the very ends of our rug here, we won't carry that second color of yarn. Okay, so last stitch here. And then again, we're gonna chain two and turn. So there may be a few spots here and there where you can kind of see the crew come through, but once it's all done, it'll look very complete and all blended in. So, okay, for row 24, we're gonna start with the color A again, the camel color, and we're gonna work two double crochet into the first stitch. So there's one and two. And then you'll notice that we're gonna be increasing the amount of color B stitches by two each row. 
So we're just going to double crochet. We'll do one, two, three, four, five stitches, and then we'll switch to color B. Okay, so on this fifth stitch, we're gonna switch back. So it's already right here. We're just gonna grab it, pick it back up, and then remember to make sure that we are working around our color A strands. And then we're gonna work three double crochet in the color B. So one, oops, two, and three, and then we're gonna switch back to color A on that third stitch. Okay, so there it is. Here's what it'll look like in back. So this little strand here we picked up, we'll see that, but it kind of blends in with the shape that we want our pattern to be. Okay. So now our repeat is going to be the three double crochet in color B, and then we're going to work seven double crochet in color A. So that was one, two, three, four, Six and seven. Then our next stitch is going to be our increase stitch. So we're going to do two double crochet. So one, and two. And then we're going to work five double crochet before we switch again and finish up another repeat. Okay, so that'd be five and then we'll switch to color B again. Okay, so the repeat this row is three double crochet in color B, seven in A, two double crochet in the next stitch, five, and then we do it again. So I'm gonna repeat that until I've done it five times total, and then I'll meet you back here to finish up our row. Okay, so I've made it through my repeats and I'm ready to switch back to color B work my three double crochet with color B. Okay, and then we'll switch back to color A. Again, we don't need to carry color B for this last few stitches. And then we're just gonna double crochet to the end. And we should have seven double crochet with color A in these last few stitches here. Okay, and that is the end of row 24. Um, so you can see how we're doing our color work to create our little sun rays that will come together. Um, so for the next few rows, you're just going to follow the written instructions, just kind of how we did here. You're going to be increasing at the beginning and then in just about every section of the color A. 
So our color A's are gonna be decreasing by one stitch every row in between here, our little sun rays. Um, and our color B's, our crew color is gonna be increasing by two. Um, so they're gonna kinda go in a V like this. Um, so just go ahead and keep following the written instructions and then I'll meet you back here for any of the tricky bits. All right, so we are just about to start row 36 and this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky with the color changes and the increases happening in the same stitch. So we're gonna chain two to start. And again, like always, we wanna have two stitches in this first stitch. But as you can see with our color B following the same pattern, this stitch should really be a color B. So we're gonna do one stitch of our increase with color A. And then we're gonna switch to color B. And work our next part of the increase. So in the same stitch as color A, we're working one double crochet with color B. And then we'll work 26 double crochet with color B until we get to our next section where we need to switch to color A. So just continue working your stitches in color B all the way until this stitch here. Okay, so now I've worked to my next color change spot. So we're gonna switch over to color A and then we'll work one double crochet the next stitch with color A. And then in this stitch, this is where our increase needs to go. So we need our first stitch of our increase to be in color A and the second stitch of our increase to be in color B. So working into the same stitch, make one double crochet with color A and then switch to color B and we're gonna work our second stitch of our increase into that same stitch as we did color A. Okay, and then we're just gonna repeat that all the way around. So just as before, we're going to work our double crochets in color B, Oops. all the way across until this stitch, work one stitch in color A, and then do one stitch in A and one stitch in B for your increase stitch right here and continue that all the way around until you've done that five times. Okay, so to end row 36, we're gonna do our last stitch of color B and then we're gonna switch to color A on that last stitch and work one double crochet with color A in that last stitch chain two, and then we're gonna turn. And then we're gonna do our increase in the first stitch here, but we want our first stitch to be with color A and our second stitch of our increase to be with color B. So for the start of row 37, we're gonna work one double crochet with color A, switch to color B, and then work a second stitch into that first stitch with color B. Okay, and then we're gonna work one double crochet in each stitch all the way across. Well, not all the way across, but across until we get to this stitch here. Okay. So I'm ready to work my last stitch of color B right here. And then we're gonna switch to our color A. And in this next stitch, I'm gonna work one stitch with color A, switch to color B, 
And then I'm gonna work the second increase stitch with color B into that same stitch that we just worked a color A stitch. And then again, we're gonna double crochet into each of the stitches across until we get again to our last stitch of color B over here. Um, so this is our last row where we're going to be working with color A. Um, and when you get to these points in our sun, this is where our um, increase row or increase is going to be in the row. So you'll work the first one with color A and the second part of the increase with color B. Continue around until you've done that five times. Okay, so here we are getting ready to do the last stitch in this repeat of color B. Okay, so that's my last color B stitch here. And now I'm switching to color A. And this is my very last stitch with color A. And now I can just drop it. Um, I don't need to carry it through this last little slice here because my last stitch is going to be with color B and then we're only going to be using color B for the last few rows. Um, so you can just drop it and leave it there and then work your second set of the increase using color B and then to end row 37 we are just going to work one double crochet in each of the next stitches all the way to the end just in color B. So just complete this row with color B all the way to the end. So for our final row, row 38, we're going to chain two and we're only going to be using the color accrue. And so we're going to start as we always do with two double crochet in the first stitch. And then we're going to double crochet for 29 and then do another two double crochet in the following stitch um, and repeat that all the way around. So it's two double crochet in the first stitch, double crochet 29, then two double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet 29. And we're gonna do that all the way around this whole entire row. So just, it'll be one solid row of just the color B. And then when we get done, we will fasten off, weave in our ends, and our Elio rug will be complete. Okay, so now that we've finished our Elio rugs, you may need to block yours a little bit just to get this long edge super straight so when you lay it down, it's flat up against the wall. Um, but once you're done with that, I do highly, highly recommend because yarn on especially like a hardwood floor or a tile floor can be pretty slippery. Um, so I do recommend getting a little rug mat or rug pad. Um, this is like, like a grippy kind, so this is gonna stick to the floor a lot better underneath your rug than just having it plain without this. So I got this one from Target. It's two feet by three feet. So what we're gonna do is just cut it to the same size as our Elio rug, lay that underneath, um, and that way your rug isn't going to slip around on the floor. So I do recommend this just because crocheted rugs can be a little bit more slippery than a traditional rug. So I'll put a link to this in the description below as well. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to size and show you what that looks like when it's on the floor. Okay, so here you can see I've got my rug pad laid out and I'm just cutting along the edge. This one is a little bit short, but I think it's still gonna work and be okay. So if you wanna get one that's a little bit longer, you just need it to be about two feet this way and no more than four feet long. So I'm going to go ahead and finish trimming this off, flip it over and show you what it looks like and how secure it will be on the ground. Okay, so I've got the rug pad cut. It's underneath the rug and you can see 
when I step on it and even try to move it, it's not going anywhere. It's nice and secure. It's not going to move around when you step on it. And that's why I highly recommend getting that little grippy rug pad to finish off your Elio rug. Thank you so much for watching this video tutorial of the crochet pattern for the Elio rug. As always, you can find links in the description below to the free written pattern on the blog, the PDF in my shop, or the complete kit from Lion Brand Yarn. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more.